Let's go, let's go. Hi, I'm Dom, and I work on developer experience here at OpenAI. And I'm Johan, and I'm on the inference and scaling team here at OpenAI. Today, we launched GPTOSS, our new open model family, both as a 120B version and as a 20B version. And we wanted to show you a couple of things that we are excited about with GPTOSS. So one of the coolest thing about GPTOSS is that it can actually use tools within its chain of thought. So similar to what you are used to from our latest reasoning models like OpenAI 3 so that means that when the model realizes it needs more information or has to do a calculation, it can automatically call a tool to help. These models are trained to work with general tools, but they are really good at using two in particular. So one is like browsing, and another is using a Python interpreter. So browsing lets the model fetch the live information from the internet, and Python lets it run code and crunch numbers. So we have released the reference implementation for both tools, so you can try it right away. And let me show you how easy it is. So we will use our chat example from our GitHub repo, and I have already downloaded the weights from Hugging Face and started the chat example. And you can see here, now we have configured this model to use a medium reasoning effort. So if you want the model to say more and think more, so it will, you can use a high reasoning effort. And then if you want the model to be quicker and faster, so you can use a low reasoning effort. And we have also enabled the browsing tool and the Python tool. Normally, you should not show the train of thought to the users, but for the demo purposes, let's look what happens behind the things and what's happening. Let me ask a model a question. So what is the weather in SF right now? So you can see the model start to browse the internet to mm -hmm. search for any relevant information about the weather in SF. Oh, and it got a weather report. Perfect summer weather, 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius. Yeah, classic San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool, though, to see the model go sort of like back and forth between, you know, doing a search and then reasoning through it and continuing to do that, opening different pages before it gets to the final response. And then even providing uh, resources here. In this case, it's citing, you know, timeanddate.com. I guess that works. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, now let's look at the second example, and we will use this example to see Python in action. So let me ask, what, what is this very big number times this very big number? So you can see that the model calls the Python tools. Again and again, it has some errors in the middle, but like eventually it figures out the result, and it prints the accurate result from the Python tool. That's very cool. And this is what makes GPT OSS so fun to use. So with just these tools, the model can go beyond what's in its weights, fetching live info and running code on the fly. And since it's an open weight model, you can add your own tools and make it even smarter. And I saw it ran pretty fast. Like, what is this actually running on right now? Oh, yeah, this is actually running on two H100s using the open source VLM inference engine, but it can also run on a single H100. That's cool. That definitely makes it very accessible for folks. Yeah, that's very cool. All right, now we saw the model can handle tool calling. It has access to the raw chain of thought. But really what I'm personally most excited about is that if you have a high-end personal setup, you can actually run the full 120B model locally on your device. So in this case, I have a 120 gig MacBook Pro that is running the full 120B model on my laptop using Olama. And since this model is running completely locally, why don't we just uh, turn off the internet? All right. And for the rest of the demo. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's try it. Yeah. Um, so I actually have Olama running on the right side. And on the left mm -hmm. side, I have Codex CLI connected to that Olama instance with the 120B model running. Mm -hmm. And I've actually been working with uh, the model on this little video game here. Mm -hmm. But I want to change the enemies to be strawberry emojis. Mm -hmm. And then I want to change the player to be a froge emoji. So I'm going to send this prompt to the model. And we can see it starts freezing right away. Mm -hmm. It starts navigating the file system the same way that it would do with you know, any other kind of uh, reasoning model from OpenAI. Yeah, we can see the model had already made some progress. It finds this uh, HTML file that need, need to be changed. And so now it's trying to continue to do some function calling here to figure out what parts of the file have to be changed. And it constantly interconnects basically between these tool calls and the reasoning. Um, and you can see it seems to have a plan, and it's starting to implement the patch. So on the right side, you can see it's actually generating at like 40, 50 tokens a second. It's now generating the actual code to write. Yeah, by the way, not everybody has a 
beefy laptop as you have. So fair. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> if you do actually uh, want to run a smaller model, you can use the 20 billion parameter model, which runs on just 16 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, by the way, this 20 billion parameter model has roughly the same capability of the O3 mini model series. So it's also a very capable model on a, and can be helpful on a lot of like, local tasks. And it has the same feature set as what we've been showing you so far. So it can do the same mm -hmm. tool calling as part of the chain of thought and it has the same browsing tools. So it seems like um, it's still modifying mm -hmm. some changes here, but we can see where we are so far. All right, no progress yet. Um, it's starting a, another update here. Yeah, it seems to find the actual class for both players and the aliens. All right. Yeah. It seems like making so it's very preparing, solid progress. It's preparing a patch, and it's going to start generating that, actually. So you can see sometimes in the chain of thought, it's actually mm -hmm. thinking through the exact output it wants to do. Sometimes it jumps yeah. straight ahead. So in this case, it seems like it applied it. So uh, why don't we check it out? Yeah, there oh, we nice. go. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Got some strawberries nice. here yeah. to, to decimate. All right. Seems like I'm not yeah. that good at this, uh, at this yeah. game. Yeah, very cool. So it's very exciting that GPT OSS can fetch information, analyze it, and solve the problems end to end. So it opens the door to more capable local interactive agents that don't just respond. It can also help you to get actual work done. Yeah, and if you want to try out GPT OSS yourself, you can uh, download it from Hugging Face with both versions available there, or you can go to gpt-oss.com and give it a try there.